We hope this finds you well, in good spirit, and having a good day. Hannah Michaels has provided us with an update on the wrongful arrest again of Ja, aka Maudib, the King of Scotland, and Stephen Criley. This unjust arrest by the satanic powers that rule Great Britain started with the Indy Camp Liberation of Scotland protest that has been documented here on this YouTube channel, God Taught Me How. The satanic British royalty, knowing that they are in gross violation of God's laws that they swore to maintain, are doing everything they can to hope this case falls between the cracks and is not noticed by anyone. The reason being because this case exposes the unlawful Queen of England and her satanic pedophile family as not having the lawful authority to rule Great Britain and Ja Maudib has a bulletproof defense. Satanists do what they have always done in the light of truth. They try to hide in the darkness. Procurator Fiscal decides not to proceed with case against Ja Maudib and Stephen Criley. On September 4th, 2017, the Procurator Fiscal decided not to proceed with the case against Ja Maudib, Stephen Criley in Edinburgh, Scotland. This decision came just after each had submitted their minute of notice to the Procurator Fiscal and Sheriff Court, notifying them that Ja and Criley intended discussing preparations for their challenge to the jurisdiction and sovereignty of the Crown Regina at their upcoming hearing set for September 7, 2017. This hearing would have been the second in the case against them where each was charged with making threats, quote unquote. Their first hearing, or first diet, was held on August 15, 2017. Pleas are taken at first diets. However, Ja and Criley did not plea as they were challenging the jurisdiction and the sovereignty of the Crown and the court. They were also handed documents about evidence against them moments before walking into the courtroom. The sheriff informed Ja and Criley that they could not discuss the challenge without having first filed a, quote, minute of notice two full days prior to the hearing. He set another hearing on September 7th so that they could see the evidence against them held by the Purator Fiscal. When Criley asked how to contact them to do so, the Procurator Fiscal said she would contact him to make arrangements, which she failed to do. Setting this second hearing meant that Ja and Criley would be able to file a, quote, minute of notice as long as they did so two full days prior to it. Their notices can be read at the King of Scotland on jatalk.theferalreport.net forward slash King of Scotland. Links will be provided below. Those familiar with their arrests will know they stem from affidavits of truth submitted in the Indy Camp court case as amicus curiae briefs. They can also be read at the King of Scotland webpage. Details about Crowley's arrest on October 19, 2016 and Jaws' arrest on January 29, 2017 are featured articles on Time to Think by Hannah Michaels. Crowley's arrest dealt with him sending the second affidavit of truth, a document that went missing at the Indy Camp appeal hearing on October 19th. Quote unquote missing documents in court seems to be, quote, common practice when the court doesn't want to address what's in them. They either go missing or the court refuses to acknowledge them. Knowing this, when Ja and Criley submitted documents for their August 15th hearing, they sent them registered mail, saved the receipts, and took extra copies to court. It was a good thing because the sheriff and procurator fiscal said they had not received any of these documents. When given Ja's refutation in court, the sheriff said he would hang on to it, and the procurator fiscal admitted she actually received it. 
she immediately also lost credibility about not receiving Criley's quote, uncontroversial evidence. The sheriff said she must respond to the document. Thus, the procurator fiscal challenged it within seven days from August 15th. However, when registered mail is sent, the burden of proof that the recipient did not receive the mail falls on the recipient, and Criley has the September 1st registration receipt. Before the August 15th hearing adjourned, the sheriff lifted Jaws' bail condition of signing in weekly. For more details about these recent activities, please refer to the King of Scotland webpage, including reading the documents they submitted. Links will be provided below. Synchronously, about the same time, Ja and Criley were submitting their minutes of notice at the Edinburgh Sheriff Court on Chamber Street. Elizabeth II was opening the new Queen's Ferry Bridge in front of a minor procured crowd just across town. One of her Privy Council members, First Minister Nicola Sturgeon, accompanied her during the festivities. Watch Elizabeth to go ripple effect. Ja and Criley read about the opening in the newspaper as they arrived in Edinburgh.